Hi, welcome to Google Geo Developer Series. I'm Mano Marks, Developer Advocate on Google's Geo Developer Relations team. Today I'd like to introduce Chad Killingsworth, who is going to be talking about using the Google Closure Compiler with Google Maps API. So take it away, Chad. Thanks, Mano. Today we're going to talk about how to speed up your maps using Closure Compiler. I'm Chad Killingsworth, and the Assistant Director of Web and New Media at Missouri State University, and I maintain our campus map, um, which has a large amount of data, and a lot of different layers, and a lot of different data sets combined on the same map. So by nature, my map, without optimizations, the map actually tends to run somewhat slow. So I started investigating how to do a lot of these optimizations, and, and today we're going to talk about using Closure Compiler. Um, which helps with the JavaScript side of things to speed things up uh, dramatically. So when we talk about maps, there's, there's a number of issues that come to the top of the list that slow down a map. In particular, using large amounts of data, large amounts of polylines, markers, any large amounts of just data on the map without, can slow them down. Now there's ways to mitigate that with camera layers and other uh, techniques. One of the other issues that can slow a map down is the size and complexity of the JavaScript. Uh, the maps API itself is not small um, and then the more JavaScript we add to our mashups the slower our map runs. As a rule of thumb I try to avoid using third-party libraries even things as common as jQuery and other things because the map site has so much JavaScript on it as it is. But the more of that we add and the more complexity the more that slows down the map. And network latency also slows down the map. We are transferring a large amount of data back and forth, tiles, JavaScript, marker images. So everything we can do to reduce network latency. And this especially shows up on mobile devices. In fact, all of these things show up more heavily on mobile devices since they are memory constrained as well as processor constrained in addition to have, having uh, higher latency networks. But today we really want to concentrate on the impact of JavaScript on the map speed. At Google I.O. 2009, there was a presentation where it was stated that on the iPhone 3G at the time, it took about 20 milliseconds to parse each kilobyte of JavaScript. Well, that calculated with the Maps API v2 code to be about four seconds of just parse time. Now, during that time, the phone was basically locked and unusable. And this is definitely not the user experience you wanted, so the Maps team has taken a lot of um, steps to make that not be such an impact on the V3 API. However, on top of that, all of our code goes through the same limitations, and so everything we can do to um, mitigate that helps. Faster devices, newer phones, desktop browsers, all of those lessen that impact, but we still, JavaScript still plays a crucial role in the speed of the map, so we want to do everything we can to make it run a bit faster. So typically when you're working with a JavaScript, we don't like to write obfuscated code with variable names that are A, B, C, D. Um, it's not good to maintain a large li code library like that. It's really hard for other people to look at it. So typically we use a JavaScript compressor. And when we talk about JavaScript compressors, there's several that are usually talked about and grouped together. Um, some of the most common ones are Dean Edwards Packer, the Yahoo User Interface Compressor, JSMin, and then the one we're going to concentrate today, Closure Compiler. So over all of these, what are the advantages of Closure Compiler? Well, first of all, Closure Compiler is a true compiler, not just a compressor. Um, unlike some of the others, it actually looks, parses your entire JavaScript, makes a symbol tree, does a whole bunch of optimizations, and then where it differs from most compilers is that it spits back out JavaScript. Now, the Closure team is fond of saying it spits back back out better JavaScript, and I, I tend to agree. It does quite a few things for your code. Um, one of the biggest advantages is it helps identify errors in your code, and as, we see, as we'll see later in the presentation, it can actually identify type errors 
and, and a lot of um, other things that normally don't come up in JavaScript till you actually deploy it. Um, so it's, it's really helpful there. Clojure is also optimized for servers which gzip and compress their JavaScript for you. So the source code itself is optimized such that the strings are more compressible and it just it's optimized. So sometimes you can get cases where the non-gzip source code is actually larger than some of the other compressors, but in almost every case I've ever seen, the compressed source, the gzip source is smaller. So some of the optimizations that Clojure can do on your source code include constant folding, function inlining, dead code elimination, it does loop optimizations and variable renaming and reuse, all really good things to have. Uh, Clojure Compiler works in several different modes. The first one is white space only and truthfully that's a little, that's just kind of a toy and it's not really useful in that it's not that hard to remove your own white space and, and it, you don't really get that many benefits from doing that. Where the benefits really start to come on, into play are with the simple optimizations and it performs a, a set of relatively safe optimizations on your code. I say relatively because it's still possible to write code which will be broken once you compile it with simple optimizations, but it's much more unlikely. Advanced op optimizations, now that gives you your best code size and performs the highest number of optimizations, but it typically requires changes to your source code to correctly compile through there. Um, there's some pretty big assumptions the compiler makes that you've got to account for. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's look at a real world example. Uh, all of these were done with the JavaScript for the Missouri State Campus map. Um, uncompressed, it's around 40k. Uh, and so going through each of the compressors, then you can see that JSMin reduces that to 68% of that size at about 28k. Um, Dean Edwards Packer is 67% at 27k. YUI compressor it gets it down to 62% at 25k, but in this case, closure in both modes totally smokes everything else. In simple mode, closure gets it down to 55% at 22.5k, and closure compiler in advanced mode brings it all the way down to 39% at about 16k, 15.5k. So that's some really good performance. That's some really good compression at that point. Um, when we run that, those, that compressed code then through gzip, how a high performance web server would do it, we can look that the original source was just compressed down to 20%, down to a, a little over 8k, um, and then we go through all the rest, pretty much in the same order before, JSMin was 16%, Packer was just under 16%, YUI compressor was just over 15%, and then closure compiler in simple mode was 14.3% and in advanced mode was 12.5%. So we can go from our original 40k source down to after closure advanced down to a 5k gzip source code. So that's as far as network speed that helps a lot. Now the parse time is going to be based on that ungzipped that uncompressed source code. Um, which Closure Compiler had at about the 16k range, um, but that's still a significant savings over the original 40k file. When you use Closure Compiler, there are several ways to use it. You can use the web application, um, and there's the web address, closure-compiler.appspot.com, and it works a lot like just an online form. You can just paste in your JavaScript, hit compile, and then copy out the compressed source. However, um, with more advanced options, it becomes pretty difficult to use the web application, but there's a web service API where you can post your code and it'll return the compressed version. Um, but really the, ones that I, the one that I use most is a downloadable JAR application. And you can also, Clojure is an open source project, so you can download the whole source uh, tree in Eclipse and make your own custom build. There's actually some optimization passes that aren't enabled by default because they break um, certain 
code, but if your code isn't one of that, then you can get even more savings by making a custom build of the compiler. So an example usage of the downloaded application would be um, it's a jar, so you the Java Dash jar, the compiler, you have to set the specify the compilation level. Um, again, that was white space only, simple optimizations or advanced optimizations. Um, you put your input JavaScript file and your output JavaScript file, and away it goes. This is true of most compressors that do any significant optimizations, but you, there are certain JavaScript statements that you kind of need to avoid. The width statement in JavaScript changes how scope and names are processed. It changes the scope, and you can actually have naming conflicts between local and global names with that, and, and so the compiler doesn't know which one you're referring to, so avoid it using the width statement. The eval statement the compiler doesn't optimize anything inside of a string. Um, it takes it as a literal. And so inside an eval statement string, um, none of those optimizations. So if you declare a variable with a name outside and then reference that variable in an eval string, if the outside variable gets renamed, um, then your code's going to break. And so you, you want to avoid the, using eval. There are some specific places that eval is still appropriate, but just as a general rule of thumb. And the other one actually doesn't come up very often, um, but certain libraries like to use a function name dot to string to see what the original function name and arguments are. Well, because those arguments get renamed with Closure Compiler, that can be um, that can cause problems. And so you should avoid using um, string representations of function or variable names. With the compiler. So we saw earlier, advanced mode by far gives you the best optimizations, but it does come with a few caveats. Uh, chances are you will have to make changes to your source code to be able to use it. Otherwise, when you compile it, you'll get uh, JavaScript that doesn't run on your page properly. Using advanced optimizations, um, there are there's several things you have to pay attention to in your source code, and they're well documented on the Closure compiler site. But let's go over a few of the most common ones. The first thing is you need to annotate your JavaScript with JS doc tags. If you're familiar with Java, you're probably familiar with the Java doc tags. These are very similar. They look something like this. And in this case, what we're doing is we're just telling the compiler what types um, to assume for a fun given function. So that in this case, we're telling the compiler that the parameter input is of type string and that the function returns a string. This helps the compiler um, do a lot of type checking for us as well. One of the big assumptions on in advanced optimizations is that all of the JavaScript on your page is defined within your source, your source file that's being compiled. So if you're referencing something from jQuery, typically that wouldn't be compiled in with your code. Uh, so in cases like that, references to other libraries have to be defined as an extern. This is simply a, a separate file that lists out um, the types of and the JS docs for functions and properties in the JavaScript and variables in the JavaScript. <coughs> Here's an example. In this case, I'm calling um, google.maps.event.addListener once, but because this function isn't defined in my source code, the compiler isn't going to know what it is and not going to know the types and is going to throw an error. Thankfully, for a lot of the common libraries, including all of them, um, both the version 2 and version 3 Maps APIs, there are externs in the closure compiler already defined. You can download them from the Closure Compiler um, source repositor repository in the contrib directory. Um, and just defining those is all you need to do in the extern file. Uh, one of the other things that can really um, break your code with advanced optimizations in Closure Compiler is mixing how you reference an object property. Um, one of the biggest things is 
consistency in closure compilers. So if you refer to a object property or method using um, a dotted syntax, you should never turn around and refer to it um, with the bracket and the array syntax. Um, here's an example. In this case, we're defining a new object. It has a lat launch property, and we're creating a lat launch object. And then right below that, we're creating a lat launch string, and we're calling the lat launch to URL value. Now, uncompressed, this is syntactically correct, but the problem is when this gets compiled with advanced optimizations, the lat launch variable property will get renamed, but the um, the reference to it in square back brackets with a string will not get renamed, and so we'll be referring to an undefined property, and that'll throw a JavaScript error. So this is just an example. They either both need to be the square brackets with the strings, or both need to be the dotted properties, but mixing back and forth causes problems. The next one is, in advanced optimization, one of the biggest advantages is, it rem is Closure Compiler will remove all unreferenced code. It's dead code elimination. But to do that, it assumes that every function and every property in your JavaScript file is used within the file. Um, and on the web, that just usually, oftentimes is not the case. Sometimes we're developing a library to be used for another purpose, and sometimes we simply are defining uh, like a mouse over function that will be referenced on an HTML element. This code demonstrates this. This is a function that's going to do a replacement on the source of an image when it's moused over. But in this case, you'll notice we have the function defined, but right below it you'll see what we have to do to make sure that Closure Compiler doesn't remove it. We're exporting it. And we're using that string syntax that I, we referenced in the one before to prevent the compiler from renaming that or aliasing it in any way. And so in this case, now we're assigning the function to a global object, and so the compiler won't consider it dead code and won't remove it. So this is referred to as exporting the function. Once you've got your code correctly compiling without errors, chances are with advanced optimizations it's still not going to run properly. You're going to have runtime errors and those can be pretty difficult to debug in a compacted file. Some of the best ways to debug your JavaScript is with the pretty print option. In this case the compiler correctly renames everything on in your file and does all of its optimizations but it leaves a a lot of white space in, properly indents the code, has line breaks, makes it a lot easier to read, and then when you compare it with your original source file, it's pretty easy to step through and see where the actual problem is occurring. A lot of times this is because of a missing JS stock or an undefined variable. There's a tool actually to make this entire process easier, and that's the Closure Inspector, which is an add-on for Firebug, which is an add-on for Firefox. And um, there's some great documentation on the Closure Compiler site on how to use Closure Inspector. Um, but basically, it will do that mapping from your sor compressed source back to your original source for you and allow you to get in there with an editor and see what's going on. So those are the two biggest ways um, to debug, easiest ways to debug your compiled JavaScript. All right, so... Hope you, hopefully you're interested in Closure Compiler now. Um, it makes a really big difference on map sites since they're typically JavaScript heavy as it is. Um, and just some information, Closure Compiler is gaining in popularity. It's currently used by the jQuery team to compress the jQuery source tree. Um, they use it in simp with simple optimizations. Um, the Closure Compiler website is code.google.com slash closure slash compiler. And on there, there's also references to a discussion group, the web application I previously mentioned, and a blog where the team updates you on what's the latest happenings with the tools. The discussion group's a great place if you're just stuck or can't figure out why the compiler's doing something. Um, the Closure team is really good about answering those questions. 
And since it's an open source project, that's also the first place to go to start getting involved with contributing your own. And then finally, if you're interested more about some of the projects I work on or about how the maps work, um, this is my blog, and you can also follow me on Twitter as at Chad Hikes. I hope, uh, hope this has been helpful to you, and I look forward to hearing how much faster your maps run after using Clojure.